Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today you'll be a skilled bounty hunter who after losing their soul to a demon has a chance to redeem themselves by finding and capturing an elusive bounty from amongst Gutterfall's leading criminal supremacies. You'll need to guide your character through Gutterfall's many districts, collecting smaller bounties and fighting other players to earn money, upgrades, and clues that will help you identify your true target. Now, you'll win by being the first to deduce and defeat the supremacy. Gutterfall Bounties is for 2 to 6 players, plays in 1 to 2 hours, for ages 13 and up, and published by Gideon Games. Now it's on Kickstarter right now, so I'm going to show you how the game works and I'll see you on the other side. This is a Kickstarter preview, so all the art and components you see here are not final. They're prototype. You're going to want to check out the Kickstarter link in the description of this video to see all the final art and components. In Gutterfall Bounties, you are a bounty hunter, and you'll get to pick one of these characters to be that bounty hunter within the game. Each of them has special abilities, but you get to pick your own. Now, there are six possible targets each game. These six are the supremacies, and only one of these will be the actual target of the game, but the others will come up and you may be battling them as well. Because at the beginning of the game, these are essentially clue cards, and these will all get shuffled up with the six supremacies and one sort of fake one. Now here we have the main board set up. Now before that fake uh, clue card was shuffled in with the rest of the supremacies, that deck was shuffled and one of them was secretly placed here. And that's going to be the one that everyone's going to be trying to figure out and deduce which one that is. Because if you're able to find that supremacy out on the board in some of these major uh, districts and take them out, you'll be the one to win. And the rest of those clue cards that were not the one selected are shuffled in with that uh, you know, that fake card, and these get dealt out evenly between the players, and if there's some left over, they get put in a pile uh, off to the side of the board that players will be able to get to and look at later. So you're trying to, like, learn from these clues to figure out, you know, rule out which one it's not to figure out which one it is and find that supremacy and defeat it. Now, this game has a deck-building element. Every player will start with the same deck of 10 cards that you see here. And each player is going to shuffle their deck up a place in the draw pile to the left of their character. Now, each player starts with 500 of the USEC, which is the currency. And on your turn, essentially, you're going to get 100 USEC to add. And you're going to draw three cards into your hand from your deck. Now, on your turn, you can move one space. Everyone starts here, and you can go down the grid like so. It could be one space to here or to here and so on and so forth. So you can move first, and then you can take the action of that spot if you want to. You can't take an action and then move. Now, it doesn't cost actions to play cards, and some of the cards you'll be playing at different points during your turn. Like if there's a Moto Taxi, you can use this to move two spaces instead of one, and this movement counts as your movement action. So we got to move two. So say we move from here to the Rag Market, and then we moved here to the Docks. Now, this essentially means that we are in this large major district here. These circles are minor districts, and these, uh, you know, the rectangular sections are the major districts where the targets are. Now these targets are going to have different, uh, you know, uh, people that we're going to have combat against. And again, we're trying to possibly find maybe the supremacy and defeat it to win. But we got to figure out who that is first. So we would flip up the top target from that deck and there's all sorts of different characters you find in there. Here is a low life. This is the easiest one to defeat. This one is going to roll two dice uh, against you and it's going to hit you if it has this symbol, which is essentially ballistics. But if you're able to defeat it, you'll get that much USEC. Now you might play combat cards and in a while I'll show you how you can get some armor and, and other weapons and such. But like here we have a firefight card. We can add one combat die to our roll. So let's say we play that card. Now normally we would have one die, but right now we'll get a second die. And we have an ability that if no lasers are rolled, the ghost may re-roll her combat roll once. And this, the laser, is how the ghost gets a hit on the target. So we would roll the dice and someone would roll a dice for the low life. And this one has no hits because it's not ballistic. And we don't have any hits either because it's not a laser. But hey, the laser is the, if the ghost doesn't roll at least the laser, they get to re-roll once. Now in this case, a re-roll, a laser hit. And so the laser had, the, the, you know, us as the ghost has one hit and they have none. So we would defeat the low life. We would get to collect this card and we would get 200 USEC. Now, if it was tied, like let's say this was here, uh, players would essentially like, you know, discard any weapons and armor they have may have used. And then if they want, if the attacking player here, you know, in this case, wanted to continue attacking, each each of them and the low life would roll one die until someone won. And that's, that's assuming that the attacking player wanted to keep 
you know, having combat. However, sometimes one of the possible supremacy targets might come up. And in this case, you don't want to try to fight them unless you think that they are, and you've ruled out to the point where you think they are the one target for the game. And then you could try to defeat them. And if you do, and it is the actual hidden clue target for the game, then you would win. Otherwise, you're out of the game. Now, it would then be the next player's turn. Now, on my next turn, again, I'm going to get another USEC and draw three cards. And let's say I didn't play all the cards that were in my hand. So depending on if, how many cards you play on your turn or not, you might have a big hand of cards versus a small, depending on how many cards you played last turn. Now, if we were defeated by that low life, we would have lost all our USEC. We would have had to shuffle all of our cards in our hand, discard, and draw pile and put them for a new draw pile. Then we would have went to one of the two clinic spots. That's where you go after you're defeated. And then you'd draw three cards to have a new hand, but then it'd be the next player's turn. Now, if you're in another spot with another player, you can attack them. Now, the player that wins that gets to take all of the USEC from the player that they defeated, and they get to take their lead cards, which are these secret sort of clue cards where they would secretly look at it and go, oh, I know that the true premacy target is not this, this game. And there are some sheets that you can use to try to make some notes as to which ones you know it's not. And obviously you want to keep this secret. Now, if the attacking player defeats another player, they get an infamy token. Anytime this player is in combat with another player, for each infamy token, the other player gets an additional die to roll against them. And there's different characters that you'll be fighting against. These ones are worth more money for the bounty because they're harder to beat. Like the boss, for example, and the enforcer, they both have armor. So if you roll and hit with one of these, it gets blocked by their armor. You can't hit them with that. Sometimes they'll have multiple things that they can hit you with, but they're worth more uh, USEC. Now, if on your turn you come to the bazaar, you can spend the currency USEC to buy cards. 100, 300, 500, three different levels of cards. Now, all the cards here are 100, all here are 300, all are 500. Now, typically these decks are face down. They just have levels one, two, and three. And you'll, you'll basically take the entire deck and you'll take whichever card you want. Now, there's multiples of the same, uh, you know, cards in here. So you'll find the one that you'll want and you'll take it and you'll place it face down in your, in your uh, discard pile. And so other players don't know what you bought. They don't know what your strategy is going to be or what you're capable of. And these cards do all sorts of different things. Like personal security, you can only play this card only in response to being attacked and you add two combat die to your roll. Or plan ambush, add two combat die to your roll. Or tactical strike, add three combat die to your roll. And the red ones typically do that. They add combat dice to you, you know, when you're attacking and such. Let's look at three others. Uh, you can check the Kickstarter page. They'll probably have more that you can look at because there's plenty of different cards. The Devil's Gamble, choose a damage type and roll one die per of these cards that you've played. And if you roll the chosen type, then you're not defeated as a result of combat. Or Judicious Retreat, after taking an action, you may move one space in any direction. Underworld Contacts, you may search the target deck on the space you occupy. And those are the decks that we did in that, you know, that uh, major district when we were looking for who we were going to fight, possibly looking for the supremacy. And you essentially get to, you know, search that target deck and place a card from that deck face down on top of the deck. This just allows you to kind of see who's there, who's next. Now, if you go to the arms dealer, you can buy a tier one or tier two card. They're weapons uh, or armor here. So tier ones cost 200 USEC. And like this is, you know, they do different things. So uh, they, they have different uh, icons from the dice that will help you out. Like this one, this will help you hit anytime you roll that. Uh, or that, for example, uh, or like on the bottom one, tier two is a five, they cost 500 USEC and they have two icons on them. And this is armor, for example, it blocks any attacks from either of these two. Now, when you go into combat, you can play up to one weapon and one armor, uh, you know, when, when you're doing this. So you can, again, just like the other decks, you essentially would look at one of these decks, you'd buy it, you'd purchase, you'd grab the deck and you would place the card that you want face down in your discard pile so nobody really knows what you've bought. Now the rag market allows you to permanently remove three cards from your draw pile, discard pile, and or hand to get 300 USEC. This is good for sort of culling your deck. Um, and then you, obviously if you search your draw pile, you'll reshuffle it when you're done doing this. But it allows you to sort of cull cards and get some money for it. Or you might want to go to the secret market. Now when you go there, you could purchase one of these lead cards. Remember these are sort of those clue cards as to which uh, you know, where, which uh, of the supremacies it's not the target for the game. So you might buy this for 200, keep it secret and go, oh, okay, it's not the kingfish. But you would put this, uh, you know, in front of you face down. You could buy as many as you want for 200. Or you can sell one back to the market for 100. You'd shuffle that deck back up for each one that you sell for 100. Or you could buy a wiretap for 300. And then when you're in the same space as someone, they reveal a, rent, a lead card to you at random. They shuffle their lead cards and they, you know, give it to you. You can look at it and you give it back to them. 
uh, but then you remove the wire tap. So it allows you to sort of get clues from other players. So in a nutshell, that's how the game's played and players take turns in clockwise order. But let's say, okay, you come to the deep slums, you flip over the target and it's the tongue, one of the possible supremacies. Now, again, they've got two armor, they roll six dice and they hit on all this. If you're able to defeat the tongue, you would then secretly look at the one lead card that was placed under the board to see if you win. You would secretly look at that, and if it is, you could reveal it and say, look, I've won. But if it was not the tongue, you would place it back, and you're essentially out of the game, and that's pretty much how you play. Well, there you have Gutterfall Bounties. And as I showed in the overview, it mixes a twist on deck building, intrigue, deduction, and combat in a unique way. Now, if you'd like to see the final art and components and all the different pledge levels available, you can click the link below me in the description of this video. And that's gonna take you directly to the Kickstarter project page, and I'm sure that Gideon Games would love your support.